I was born and raised in New Orleans, Louisiana. I grew up in a very atypical Christian family. I grew up observing Shabbat and keeping kosher style and keeping the holy days. So as a result, it was a very philo-Semitic environment. It was a very pro-Jewish environment. And then in high school and eventually in college, I read a lot of Jewish literature. I was very fascinated by Jewish literature and drawn to it. And eventually I started reading Zionist philosophy in college. And freshman year in college, I was taking a lot of geopolitical classes because I was interested in global affairs. And then I read a book by Elie Wiesel called The Town Beyond the Wall. And this book was all about our duty as human beings, our duty as human beings to engage in the act of choice. And at the time, there was a lot of anti-Semitism resurfacing globally, specifically in Europe. So I decided to change majors from film, I was majored in, majoring in film at the time, to international studies. And then I started a student pro-Israel organization at the University of New Orleans and conducted uh, advocacy or activism for the three and a half years out of my four years in college. I'm a Tikva fellow at the Wall Street Journal. I've been studying the world of pro-Israel advocacy for the past eight months of my life. I am developing what is essentially going to be a thesis paper on the topic, uh, specifically with regards to its effectiveness in reaching millennials because we're focusing on the college campus. So the title of the final paper will be uh, Israel Advocacy and the Bottom Line, What Works, What Doesn't, and How to Make It Better. So Zionism to me, in its most distilled essence, is fundamentally about self-actualization. Now, obviously, within the Jewish context, it means the uh, great journey of a people who have been exiled from their land several times, who had to face persecution and pogroms and lynchings uh, in exile in the diaspora. It represents that people realizing their innate dignity and deciding to self-actualize, to engage in the act of self-determination and reestablish their nation state, return to their homeland, and build a society or as, as much as is possible of human flourishing. And I believe that that's relevant for the 21st century because today in an increasingly globalized world, we are forgetting, I think, a little bit about the dignity of difference, meaning the fact that the Jewish people were able to reestablish their state speaks to a thing that Jean-Jacques Rousseau talked about in one of his uh, books. He once asked, and I'm paraphrasing, he said, I do not know the reasons as to why the Jews should not have a state. It is only when they have a state that we shall know what they have to say. And the implication of that is that peoples all over the world have something to say, whether it's Nigerians or Iraqis or the French, the Jewish people have something to say, and they have something to contribute to the rest of civilization. And that's something that I think that we have forgotten a bit about in this increasingly interconnected world, uh, that it, this increasingly, as I said, global world, globalized world. But I think it's important to remember that dignity of difference. I think it's also important for the 21st century just as a teaching of inspiration and empowerment and motivation, as a reminder of the potential that human beings can rise to, the level uh, that human beings can rise to. And I think it can be motivational and inspiring for people who have to confront different challenges and different um, roadblocks in their way.